on today's episode of Moto Cheese. What is up today, guys? Today we have an Endry Engine Pro 1000 watt 48 volt e bike. This bike goes for $14.99. It's actually designed in California, but made in China. So let's see what's in the box. Everybody has their own way of opening the box. I prefer doing it this way because then you have a little platform to work on. Especially if you don't own a mini truck, right mini? It's got nice fat tires. It does come with fenders. Oops. We'll go through all the controls, settings, maximum speed. Let's see if we can run the battery down. Toolkit. A charger. A user's manual for the battery. The LCD digital dash. And the actual bike itself. So it's three max speed settings, 22 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour, and 28 miles an hour. The power consumption is a 750 watt hub, but they claim 1000 watts peak. Maximum load is 330 pounds. Maximum climb grade is 30 degrees. It does come with the 20 inch fat tires. It does come with eight speed. This claims the maximum riding range in pedal assist mode is 50 miles. And in just hand throttle mode, it's 25 miles. This does have rear suspension and front suspension, which is the first of the electric bikes that I've tried. All the other bikes I've tried did not have a rear suspension, so I kind of like that. Built-in energy recovery system. This is the front tire. It has about a six and a quarter inch disc front brake on this. It is an aluminum alloy rim. It comes with a rear rack. LED brake light. Get all these zip ties cut. This is the Engine Pro. This is a folding bike as you can see. The big hinge there, that's welded on really good. A lot of bracing. A lot of nice TIG welds going on here. Front adjustable suspension. I'm liking what I see so far. Front LED. Van reflector. Pretty, pretty nice system there. Quite a bit of engineering going on here. I think it has a protection on here, or I hope it does. Oh yeah, protect the screen very nicely. It's like a HLT 100 rear shock. It's a thousand pounds, thousand pound shock that is. It does not have a quick detach front wheel because it's a folding bike. This bike is an 8 speed because it says 8 right there. Oh, nice fat seat too. Nice fat seat. With some cushions on that as well. Plenty of adjustments. So it looks like it's got an 8, a 10, 13, 15, a 14, and a 17. Phillips and a regular screwdriver. And three Allen wrenches that come in a kit. The handlebar stem has a machine groove so it only go one way. And if it loosens up it won't spin on you here. But there is an adjustment to align the forks with the steering. The throttle looks like it's on the left. Just get this started here. Finish it on the floor. Snug up that handlebar for now. We'll take our shipping axle out here. Huh. It has open and lock and this has dampening. Now, I'm going to take that keeper out. 
Don't squeeze the brakes. The locking tab goes down 15 millimeter. Snug up this axle. Turns nice and freely. Oh, that. It's got, it's got a little guard for the chain here. Hydraulic brakes. Oh, look at that. Aluminum fender. Front and rear. Not plastic. Very nice. This mounts the fender and the headlight. Guess you have to keep this folded up to get it through here. Goes in front like that. I think that might be a little too long here. I think they're a bit long here. We can put some washers, which actually might not be a bad idea. There. That worked good for that side. That worked well. Give it some more clearance. That ought to do it. It's a little loose. Built-in energy recovery system. Must charge off the back hub as you're pedaling. This side takes the left hand thread. 15 millimeter. And this takes the right hand thread clockwise. I like that they give you the little washers this time too. A lot of them don't. Looks like we're all set to take it off the mini truck. Doesn't look like the rear shock is adjustable. Looks like this bike will work out well if you're shorter too. It has a lot of adjustment for height differences. Handlebars a little narrow, but not bad. These are all the way down right now. Let's have a permanent magnet for that feedback system. I'm like 235 pounds. I get a hard time moving that shock down. I'm sure when you hit some big bumps, it's going to absorb it nice. Let's see how this bike folds up. Take the battery out and we'll charge it. So to fold this bike up, You keep your steering wheel straight ahead. That's it. That stand on the bottom is for when you fold the bike up. And that's what it looks like all folded up. Nice and compact. Almost looks like a wheelchair. Put in your trunk of your car, whatever. And it looks like you have a handle here to pick everything up. Let's put this back together. That's it. It's as easy as that. The lock to take the battery out is under here. Forty-eight volt, sixteen amp hour, seven hundred and sixty-eight watt hours. It's limited at fifty-four point six volts. Looks like it's got a nice fan on the power supply. Has a one hundred to two hundred forty volt power supply. I don't see the battery indicator on the battery itself. As you can see, not only does that take your battery out, it's also your ignition, so you turn it on and off if you leave the battery in the bike. That would be on the underside of the frame.
and take it out when it's off. You gotta leave the key in when it's on so you don't forget to shut it off. I guess that's not too bad of an idea. You do not have to take the battery out to charge it. It has a hole that you can get the charger in on the bike while it's together. But this is if you don't want to take the entire bike in to charge it and you can pull the battery out. Well that battery's charging. Handlebar height at its lowest is about eh, about 49 and a half inches. <laughs> you can go all the way up to, well, that's the wire stretched to its max. That's about 53 inches. Seat height all the way down is about 32 and three quarters. All the way up safely is about 40, maybe 41. So the overall length on this bike looks like about 66 inches, maybe a little bit over. If you want to tighten up this quick lock device, you just turn that thumb screw a little more and then swing that closed. Don't forget to tighten up the handlebars like I did almost. Let's center them first. If your handlebars aren't in line with your wheel, you can loosen this collar here. Which I'm just going to check the tightness. And then you can align your wheel with your handlebars. This does have a USB port. 500 milliamp, 5 volt. Type A. If you want to hook up your cell phone for charging or whatnot. Now these controls are a little high for me. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. That's the controls for the LCD panel. It does not give you a small Allen wrench. That looks a little better to me. You know, when I first started getting into these e-bikes, I didn't think I'd like them, but I really like them. It's a good way to get some exercise, and if you get tired, you just hit the battery. Even using battery assist, it's still good exercise. It says maximum is 25 kilograms, which is what, 50 pounds? It's a pretty hefty rack, though. Jeez, you think you'd be able to put more than that on there. So it's pretty deluxe where it comes with the front and rear fender and a rack. Hydraulic disc brakes in the front and rear. It's folding. Comes with a brake light. A really nice cushion seat. A rear shock. Boy, it don't move much. Yeah, and I'm fat. You can say B is fat. Huh. The, front, the front seems to go down more than the back. Yeah. It must be for hitting like big jumps or something. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? You got like three feet of air that time. Can I try it really quick? Front adjustable forks, fat tires. The frame is all aircraft aluminum, so it's as lightweight as you can get it and still have the strength. It has a headlight, of course. An automatic headlight feature. You turn the light on when it gets dark. Looks like it's got an electronic horn that's built in the headlight. This will take a payload of 330 pounds. Shimano Atlas gear set, aluminum pedals, thumb throttle. It also has a regenerative charging system. So it has to have a permanent magnet in here. It comes with a lot of features for the price. Nice leather hand grips. the next day and it's done <laughs> these cables are a little bit in the way makes it a little difficult try it over there That's a little better because you have to turn this key on for power. You cannot take the key back out once it's on. Hold it to power up. That's the power button. 
nice color display economy normal and sport so we'll set it to one so one is about 14 miles an hour now two is about 23 24 now three saying 33 uh, kilometers Wow, 44 kilometers is four and five. 55 kilometers. Wow. So we got to figure out how to get in and change that to miles per hour. We'll change from your trip time. Max speed, 35, because I already tested it out. Average speed's 28. Distance, zero miles and your trip and your power that turned your headlight on but it's too bright in here to get in a setup mode hold these two that's if you want to clear the data for the trip distance or the factory reset your setup your units kilometers or miles per hour brightness automatic we got five four three two and one so i'll keep it on auto auto power off is set for 10 minutes we'll keep that speed limit set at 31 boy it'd be nice if it does do 31 and back personalization CRU is your cruise so normally when you hit your throttle and you hold it for a while it'll hold itself on like cruise control if you don't like that you can shut it off here that's nice because I didn't see that in the other ones ACF reverse charging current that's when you recharge a battery as you're going auto headlight on and off see so now if I turn it on It'll stay on. We'll leave auto headlight on. And there's your power settings. Where you can go in for your P1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 5 was on 99. I set it to 100. And system information. And that's it. That's a nice looking display. We'll take a ride to the post office. Maybe hit a couple side roads and come back around a long way. So we're going to try Sport 5 for our road test here. So it looks like we can cruise a little bit over 30 miles an hour. This does have pedal assist, so we're going to pedal assist up this hill a little bit. See it's using 999 watts of power without pedal assist. So it is pretty powerful. I don't know exactly what this incline is. We're going downhill here. Let's see what we can get it up to. The roads are a little sandy. The brakes work really good. 
I just don't understand why they put the rear brake on a right handle and the front brake on a left handle. We're definitely going to have to do a part two because it's cold. Do a little more pedal assist down the road here, because we're on a major highway. Well, for around here. See how the suspension works on this potted up dirt road. It actually works pretty good. You can feel the back shock working and the front of course. We're gonna do a little time speed test. Ready? We'll call that 29 miles an hour. How are we going? Good, how are you? Good. Too damn cold. It should be warmer. Make that only. <laughs> Courtney and Nicholas, put a little extra something in your for Jeff Rowe was right, you need a face mask. You talk about robbing a bank, and that's a federal offense. Good lord, Jandis! I've been saving that for you. You farted right into my butthole. It's like a fart transplant. We're gonna run it through the gears here from first to eighth. steep hill right here. The best bike I've tested hit about five miles per hour on the steepest spot.
me. I still got my floor to thin down below. Looks like 18 minutes ride time. Maximum speed was 36.4 miles per hour. And I went 16 miles per hour average. And a total of 5 miles. Sorry man, it was cold, but look at that. Still got 100%. So there will be a part 2 to this. Maybe me and Jeffro will do a little exploring on some rail trails or some bike trails. So I think it did pretty well. Check the hub here, it's barely warm. Of course it is cold out. So I think it's a pretty good buy. If you guys are interested, I'll put the links below and any kind of discount codes that they provide me with. So yeah, you know, you never see my face, but I'm not the type of guy that stands there and says, hey, look at me guys, look what I'm doing. You wanna see what's behind me? You gotta look through my face first. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.